Hi there, welcome to a simulation example. Um, we are going to look at the production of the methyl ether chemical, DME, directly from the hydration of methanol. Let's analyze the production of the methyl ether chemical directly from the hydration of methanol, produced at an annual rate, 50,000 metric tons per hour, that's a lot, um, for 330 days. This is to allow maintenance in between for the plant. There are different ways to manufacture methanol, but in this case, we are only going to look at one, which is the dehydration of methanol. In this case, methanol chemical is obtained from syngas, hydrogen, and carbon monoxide mixture. DME has great potential benefits and multi-purposes in fuel. It reduces nitrates and sulfates being emitted into the air. To take into consideration here, we are going to look at sustainability. That's very important. Whether or not methanol dehydration it's um, sustainable to produce DME. DME production reaction pathway is assessed in terms of Gibbs energy, profit, and potential environmental, as well as atom economy. Those routes help us to determine if this reaction is also sustainable. Cocoa simulation we use to simulate this DME produced from dehydration of methanol. We want to obtain a high efficiency at least of 99%. It is important to notice that methanol and DME are petroleum products, hence they are flammable. They have a strong odor and risky to handle and also have bad environmental impacts. There are some key formulas that we are going to look at here. Methanol will give us DME and a little bit portion of water. It gives us a ratio of two is to one and one. In this case, our assumption will be methanol assumed to be pure feed and will enter at one bar, which is 100 kPa, and at a temperature of 298 K. The plant is said to operate for 330 days to allow maintenance and shutdown. Mass balance was used to convert everything to kilomoles per hour. This is how everything was obtained. We are given 50,000 tons. And if you can convert this from days to hours, it can give you in hours, which is 137.03 kilomoles per hour. Water ratio here, it's one DME ratio is to one ratio of water, and they are both at 137.03. Cocoa simulation was used to simulate everything. Um, two important files were used here, and it includes cocoa configurity file, which is used to configure the thermodynamics. The equations or compounds used here was methanol, water, and DME. Um, the equation of state, it's SRK. Cocoa configure cone file was used to configure the reaction. The compounds involved is methanol, water, and DME. It is a heterogeneous reaction, and the reaction ID is DME production. At the property package and the reaction package. Let us look at our simulation. So here is our simulation. We have our stream here, and we have methanol, which is entering at 274 kilomoles per hour. Here are the properties and in the composition of the stream, there's 0.99 methanol and a very small percentage of water. We have the mixer here and two streams are fed into the mixer. Stream one is available at one bar and a half kPa and stream two, it is available, which is a recycled stream. We have a pump to pump everything into our first exchange economizer. Heat exchange transfers heat between two fluids. A shell and tube exchanger can be assumed to be used in this scenario. The first um, exchanger, it is the economizer and it reduces the consumption of energy, also preheats the fluid to improve efficiency. In this case, water is in its gas form and it is used to heat the stream. Remember that water is less viscous and thus will have a higher flow rate and can be found in the tubes of our exchanger. The second heat exchanger here will heat the streams into more higher temperatures before entering the reaction bed. In this case, we are working with the PFR. As you can see here, cooling occurs and will be a slight change of temperature. Chemical reaction takes place in the reactor from our reaction bed, goes back into the exchanger, exits at four. 1, 2, K. From here, we go all the way to our flash drums, the distillation columns for separation. There are two heater coolers, the first one here and the second one here. So there are two heater coolers. The first heater cooler increases the temperature of the first stream from 400 K to 430 K. Hence, it is an evaporator. The heat is absorbed and boils back into the vapor at 430 K. At this point, our composition has vaporized. The second heater cooler, it is a cooler and cools the stream entering the distillation column from 412K 
2351K. So our two flesh drums here, there are two distillation columns in this design. The first distillation column separates almost pure DME to a 0 0.99 fraction. As you can see here, it comes out at 0 0.99. The bottom stream are from the first distillation column. It is sent to the um, second flesh drum. And here it is. We have some few traces here of DME and more of water. Enters the second drum where methanol and water will be separated and recycled back to the mixer. Let's check if DME is sustainable. Let's look at the Gibbs energy. The aim is to have our Gibbs energy below zero, and that will tell us if the reaction is thermodynamically favorable. So here is our analysis. We used all the parameters that we're working with here, methanol, DME, and water, and our Gibbs energy was found to be a negative 209. And in this case, it is safe to assume that since while the Gibbs energy is way below zero, this rule is highly thermodynamically um, favorable. Let's take into consideration atom economy as well. So atom economy here, um, it tells us how much of the product will be found in the final product. It said 71.89 will end up in the product, which is good. One can also look at the price and see if it is a profitable um, road to follow. I just want to say thank you to all the referencing sites that I used to obtain this nice um, plant design and simulation. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and stay tuned for more exciting videos.